and I want to talk about housing. So I'm going to do a series of three films looking at housing around the constituency and looking at the broader issues of what is happening on our doorsteps. Uh, this is Warnington Green, which is a catalyst estate. Uh, it used to be Kensington Housing Trust. We can see over to my left here that a lot of the houses are boarded up now and people have been moved out. This is in preparation for demolition of this block. They're going to use it to turn the vehicles around because they're, they're rebuilding to stand here where the crane is down, down Wannington Road. Now we have a, an estate here which was very beautifully built and originally and beautifully conceived and the spaces inside the flats are rather lovely and Pepler House was uh, actually almost listable and the interior spaces are fantastic. Uh, people who've lived here since the beginning tell me these have never been maintained. That's always been from day one, proactive repairs, not cyclical maintenance. And this is absolutely classic of many of our housing providers in Kensington and Chelsea. And we've seen over the years that this is deliberate, uh, this whole process of uh, managed decline to ripen the estates and the people who live in them for development, which is what's happening here on Mornington Green. But people moving from these flats to the new flats realise what they had here, albeit that these were never properly maintained. And this is absolutely classic of what's happening in social housing. So. We have around us, all around Warnington Green, we have uh, TMO houses, and we know what happened there. Years and years of underinvestment and simply shocking management, which led to the hideous fire at Grenfell Tower, where all of us have either lost friends or our friends have lost friends and family. Um, and it's a scar on social housing, and it's a scar on North Kensington, and it's a scar on the council who never properly oversaw or scrutinised what was going on, despite Labour councillors like myself continually asking them to. So why did they try to move the survivors of Grenfell Tower fire into this estate, into the old estate? Why would they do that? I find it really shocking that they would move people who were traumatised into this estate. So as far as I know the people, I know they turned them down. Why would they want to move in here to an estate which is about to be knocked down and which has been poorly managed for many, many years? Why would they want to do that? So those people have, have withdrawn. So they now offered some of the flats here for the survivors of the Holland Park Gardens fire, and that's catalyst. So we see here a cycle of neglect, disrepair and pretty much disdain for the people who live here that it's our duty to look after and I find it really appalling that this is still continuing today despite what happened nine months ago we haven't stepped up there's not the culture of change that we need in the council and people all over the constituency and indeed all over the borough are seeing how little the council really understands what people who don't earn as much as others need to, to look after them. Where we're standing is going to be a road. We're building, they're building a road through here and they're going to start doing this very, very soon within the next few months. Now we have at the other end of the road here, Pepler House, which is over there is where I live. Uh, we have a building site going on there at the moment. There will be another building site here where we're standing. So I'll have a building site there and a building site here, big lorries, which will affect the children's health, elderly people's health from fumes and goodness knows what else. People who live in this end of the borough are already suffering from poor health and all they're doing is adding to it. And you know, they just do not think about people. People are second. This is part of the new development now of Warnington Green. You can see the buildings down the back here. A certain person I won't name called Warnington a concrete ghetto full of fear and paranoia. The old buildings are actually brick built. I don't think these are much better, frankly. They're not very pretty on the outside. And on the inside, the flats are dark, pokey, and they're not very well designed. They're also very badly constructed. So this first block, this first phase particularly, has been plagued with problems. They're not just snagging problems. We've had collapsed ceilings, the windows leaking, a collapsed floor, and there's just damp coming through everywhere. These buildings are three years old. I find that really, really appalling. So people were moved out of their old flats, which weren't looked after, 
and suffering disrepair and moved into brand new flats which are worse in their space quality and worse built. So what, you know, where's the benefit there? I think we know where the benefit is because over the other side of the road are the townhouses which have supposedly paid for this whole development. There's been a blip, shall we call it, a softening in the market. Many of them, I've been told, haven't sold and they're lent, letting them out. So um, how the rest of the market's going to go, they're building all over the place. They need to sell the private flats to build some new, very inadequate, socially rented flats, which are more like hotels, not in a good way. There's no outside space, there's no transitional space. People don't really meet each other, apart from the little pokey stairs and the lift. Um, and a lot of that community feeling has gone as well as quite a few people who've moved out because this isn't their home anymore. And that, I think that's a huge shame. There's a lesson here for all of us of bad development. This is ex a prime example of how not to do things.